this fall, Nature Change visited the Little Traverse Bay Band of Adawa Indians in Harbor Springs. We were there to ask about a new effort to diversify forest holdings through enhanced migration of tree species. My name is Eric Hemnoy. I'm the Director of Archives and Records for the Little Traverse Bay Band of Odawa Indians. We are a federally recognized tribe located in northern Michigan here in Emmett County. Natural resources have played a very prominent role in the history of the Odawa since time immemorial, since the very beginning. And natural resources come in a lot of different forms, whether it be plants, whether it be trees, whether it be rocks, whether it be landscapes. And part of our job here in the archives is to identify the multi-use of these natural resources throughout the, the tribe's history and preserve that. And behind me you'll see a, a large basket, and this basket is made out of black ash. And black ash has been a significant tree for the Odawa for, for hundreds, if not thousands of years. We made tools out of it, we made snowshoes out of it, we made these baskets that were used for sale, and a basket like this represented a very difficult time for the Odawa at the early 20th century when a lot of Odawa didn't have opportunities for jobs, economics, and these natural resources helped provide food and help pay bills. Um, tribal people weren't being hired to have the jobs other non-tribal people were getting. So they used what they've always had, the resources around them. So making these baskets represented feeding your family. It represented paying your bills. It represented making your ends meet with what you knew. So the natural resources helped in a multitude of ways for the tribe over, over centuries. And when people ask me, where are you from, Eric? I say, Anamatikamek and Donjaba, Waganuxing and Donjaba. Um, I am from the place of the prayer tree. I am from the land of the crooked tree. And the identity of the Odawa from this area is tied to trees. Ani Jijak and Dodum, Waganuxing Odawa, Nada, Doug Craven, Indigenous Cast. My name is Doug Craven. I'm the Natural Resource Department Director here for Little Travers Bay Bands, Odawa Indians. I am a member of Little Travers Bay Bands, Odawa Indians as well, and a member of the Crane Clan. One of the most recent opportunities that we had uh, is the tribe purchased a farm. Um, it's about a little over 300 acres up in the northern part of Emmett County, just off of our reservation area. Um, it is called uh, Zibi Mijuang. Uh, Zibi meaning river, Mijum meaning food. So the place where food grows by the river. Um, it is uh, right now uh, partly ran by the Natural Resource Department. And then we also have a separate um, organization that runs the agriculture part of the farm uh, but the wooded areas of the farm are underneath our jurisdiction natural resource department um, as well as some areas for hunting or those types of things um, there are product or agriculture that's done on the, the property as well uh, with the goal of you know increasing food sovereignty and making food fresh food available to the community we have a conservationist who manages our, our forest and so we're really taking a look at the properties that we have that have forest on them in addition to our reservation area in general, our larger area. Uh, we have about 12 townships that comprise the LTBB reservation. And so we're really looking at, you know, how do we want to manage those forests and what type of things can we get out of, what values do we have? Um, so we're looking at uh, a couple of things. One is, you know, what are going to be the impacts of climate change? So we know that climate change is happening. So we have a climate adaptation plan. Uh, so for some of the properties that we specifically own, uh, we're looking at incorporating some of these ad adaptation uh, techniques. So one of the things we're looking at doing um, is planting some more southerny type strains of trees such that we can be prepared um, as we move forward. Noah Jansen is a forest ecologist and the tribe's conservationist. Jansen combined recommendations from a forest management plan written by Martell Forestry with suggestions from the Northern Institute of Applied Science to guide tree planting in plots on the tribe's farm property. Many of the tree species planted are not common in northern Michigan. Yeah, so all the species that we're planting are native to Michigan, and they, but some of them are not found in this part of the state yet, um, and they may be found there in the future. Um, so what assisted migration is, is basically taking a species that's not found where you are right now, but will probably do well there in the future and bringing it there ahead of time so that when the climate's warmer, you already have that species there. It's already established and, and ready to go. 
So the bigger goal, it fits again within those uh, management objectives in the forest management plan. So we want to provide um, culturally significant species, we want to provide habitat for wildlife, we want to protect and promote forest health. So the, the species in there, a lot of them are designed to for wildlife habitat improvement. So there's a lot of uh, mass bearing trees, a lot of oaks and hickories, walnuts, uh, fruit trees um, that will provide food for wildlife. And that's, that's also again a benefit for the, the tribal members that will use the property for hunting uh, and for gathering. Um, there's other species that have more of a cultural value. One of the main goals uh, of our tribe and of natural resource management for us is really managing for seven generations. So we're looking forward um, seven generations. And so the things that we're doing now, the actions that we're taking, uh, the decisions that we're making, we're really looking how will that impact future generations. So not us right now, you know, how can we get the big bang for the buck right now? Or what can we do that impacts this current generation? But we're really looking, you know, the things that we're doing, how how is that going to impact uh, future generations? Um, we have a 1836 treaty uh, that we signed and a portion of that we reserve the right to hunt and fish and so I am the seventh generation from the signing of that treaty. So it really drives that home uh, that you know our ancestors had the forethought to look at how things were going to impact future generations and I get the benefit from that. So as a natural resource manager, as a department, we have a natural resource commission as well, we're really taking that uh, you know, seriously and we feel that we have a responsibility to future generations. And so that's a core component of how we do natural resources, how we look at climate adaptation or climate change, uh, but also how we're looking at managing our, our forest as well. Um, we're looking at them from a more holistic management uh, force. So your wildlife species, your fishery species, they're dependent on the forest themselves and so we're really looking at managing those uh, from that perspective as opposed to a profit as opposed to uh, maintaining a 60 uh, you know age year class of trees that are just routinely harvested uh, for profit we're looking at do we need some um, old growth? Do we need some areas that are maybe managed with fire so that you can have berry fields again or areas that you can collect blueberries? I um, mean you know, we're really looking at these types of things but that's based upon our values, the tribe's values and that really translates into how we manage our forest.